ready to receive today come on how many is ready to receive I pray that the Lord will give us an ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say listen as your pastor I want to tell you I need you to lock in right here lock in in this holy moment and hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say and limit your moving around if you needed to go to the bathroom you should have went now it's time to lock in. Amen? Don't be moving around. Let's hear the holy word of God. Let's give it up for Elder Germain Brunson in the house today. I love you, bro. Can you do me a favor and give God the biggest praise for the greatest pastor? I said, give God the greatest praise. And listen, beside every good man, there is a better looking woman. Can we thank God for my sister, Pastor Jen? I feel in the book of Revelations, the Bible says that the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. I feel Jesus, therefore the spirit of prophecy is about to go forth in this place. Woo! So my life you have been there. a new song, but I just feel your love keeps coming out, it's coming out to me, when my, I, get those hands up and do it. Now sing your own song, do it. Come on, sing it, sing it, say your goodness. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never, you never. Woo! Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never Woo. Jesus. Woo. Get those hands up and say it. 
even when I don't see it, your work, even when I don't feel it, your work again, you never stop, you never stop working. I'm going to say it till you get it. Even when I don't see, I need to stay on the stage, sorry. Even when I don't feel it, you work again. You never, you never. I don't know who needed to hear that today. You thought God wasn't working for you. No, he's not with you because he's ahead of you. Because what you need, he has already taken care of. So I need everybody in this church, everybody online, lift up a shout of praise. Because God's not going to do it. He's already done it. so thankful for Revival Sunday. Here's what we know. You told the pastors of this church to do this because your intentions with this service uh, and your intentions with tonight at 6 p.m. is really simple. You are about to cause dead things to live again. Somebody better get your hands up. You're waiting for the end of the service. And I'm telling you right now, God's about to heal you right now. God, I heard your Holy Ghost. He said, if you praise me, you're going to realize you're already healed. Woo! He said, if you lift him up. Woo! Woo! Father, we're thankful. Get those hands up with me. Come on. We're thankful. Yeah, that dead organs are about to live again. I speak to that pancreas in, that, in this room and those watching online. You better get ready. The doctors are about to designate and diagnose you as a miracle walker. Your intentions today is to cause dead marriages to fall back in love again. So we're here for it all, God. We're here for it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody shout amen. Come here. This is as bright as the lights get, right? Okay. I need an usher. It's about to go on a little trip. While you were singing the bridge of this song, hold on, my Even when I don't see that you're working, even when I can't feel that you're working, you never stop, you never stop working. I know the lady that wrote that song. And God said, Grimane, I want you to look at her. Because the same thing, lift your hands, the same anointing and grace that's on that lady that wrote that bridge, I'm about to put it on her too. Y'all just, excuse me, can we thank God, excuse me just for one second, can we thank God for the greatest production team this church will ever have? Come on, you can do better than that because you can hear me because of them. You can see this dark skin because of them, amen. We're glorifying you for lights today. Don't be weird. If it's in here, let's rebuke it. Every racial racism demon, not only do you have to get out of this house, you got to get out of this city. Don't be weird. So we, we're thankful for you, sound men. Couple of things. If there is a compressor on my mic, take it off. Okay? Because I'm going to shout. And I'm going to get loud. I'm going to lose my mind. Woo! I'm going to do that a lot. Woo! I'm going to do that a lot. 
Okay, it's gonna happen, but I promise you, if you take the compressor off, I won't blow anything. But if you keep it on, I don't know if I'm gonna make it to tonight, and that's the truth. Okay, so do me that favor. Amen. Can we thank God for the greatest sound? Man? What is he talking about? They know. Lift your hands. He said the same. The same. Y'all got to understand that what God's about to do in her is about to take you deeper in worship. He said, remain the same anointing that's on that woman that wrote the brief that song is the same anointing that I'm about to place on her right now in this minute. See, every praise and worship team and musician, y'all should, y'all should be screaming the loudest because if she gets it, that means you are about to get it. <laughs> he said, Germaine, do me a favor and tell her, look at me. No more will you be afraid to hit notes that you think you can. AJ, get ready. She's about to start raising keys of songs. God said, he said, tell her, Germaine, no, she can't, but I can. Oh. And God said, the moment that you take your step out of fear and anxiety of embarrassment, oh, my God. God said, you're not going to walk on the water. You're about to walk on the stones that the builders rejected. Get ready. The same anointing that was on David when he was by himself writing songs that we are thousands of years later singing God said, get ready. I'm about to take you into secret places where you are about to pen the songs of heaven. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. There, there's a music project that's going to come out of this church. There's a, a music project that's going to come out of this church and I'm going to help you do it. And the same anointing that was on that woman that's coming on her that's about to come on y'all. Guess what? She's going to help you too. Get ready. The anointing that you have been, this is why this mic was like this. I thank you, Holy Ghost. The anointing that you've been compressing. God says he's taking the limiter off. Get ready. You're about to do things that you've dreamed about. Stretch your hands this way and open your mouth and start praying. Is there any oil in here? Just give me a little bit. No, you keep your hands lifted. Father, we thank you today that the same spirit that was on David that is on hundreds of worship leaders. I thank you that today, God, when she gets up off the ground, she's going to now start walking into a mantle called worship. I thank you that a husband will be able to navigate for her when you're speaking to her. Grace him, woo, Jesus, to protect this gift. In Jesus' name, we pray. When I count to three I want you to give God the greatest praise and worship you have given him this year because what God is doing in her and about to do in this team are about to take you to the secret places of God one two three shout now keep shouting we rebuke you spirit of fear keep shouting hey we rebuke you spirit of anxiety keep shouting you will not be embarrassed to sing what's in your heart from this day forward, says the Lord. Give God a big shout of praise.
According to Matthew, you have a cell phone and you're anointed, that means you're pulling out the iPhone. If you're still bound by the devil, you're pulling out a droid. I'm so teasing. Just doing a little alliteration there. You know, droid, devil, DD, amen, English class, God bless you. Before we read this scripture, I do want you to know that something unusual is going to happen tonight. Here's my recommendation. Don't come in here looking too cute tonight. This is a church where men wear Jordans. I feel like I'm at home. Don't wear your nice Jordans tonight. You will crease them. Something's coming on this church that is about to push you into another realm and dimension. This is Revival Sunday, okay? So guess what? We gonna have revival. Watch this, how does that look? Well, you're doing it, so you tell me, I'm gonna tell you, I don't know how it looks. That's been the problem. I believe that's why we haven't seen revival. Because everybody says revival looks like this and revival looks like that. But here's the moment. The moment you figure out something about God is the moment he transformed into something that you've never seen before. So when you say God moves this way, guess what? He said, nope, I did that. Now I'm doing something new. I prophesy, lift your hands, Destiny Church. God's about to bring you into a new dimension of his glory. Okay? I'm going to try my best not to be here long because I need for you to go home, eat your lunch, pray for my saints. I'm, listen, you know what? Every Kansas City Chief fan in here, I don't know what's going on. Except for your defense. Am I lying? Okay, I'm just making sure I'm not a lying preacher. Go home, watch a little bit of football, and come back in here. Let's go after God tonight. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 7. And we will start reading in verse number 7. I, I saw it on the screen earlier, and I said, Lord, you are up to something. Matthew chapter 7. And we will start at verse number 7. And it reads, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, watch this, that's not the preacher, that's not your neighbor, that's not the people that's on platforms, that's not special people, no. For everyone, hit yourself on the chest and say, that's me. For everyone who asks, receives the one who seeks finds and to the one who knocks the door will be opened I didn't come with a sermon today I'm not really here to deliver a message to you today really here just to whisper in your ear what God is asking you to do that will become loud in your life. Here's what God is asking. You ready? God is saying, open the door. Open 
the door. As you take your seat, tell the person on the left and the right, it's time to open the door. It's time to open the door. I'm so grateful to be here with you today. I'm not going to lie, I've been having a blast hanging out with my brother and my sister. Can we give it up for them one more time? Here's what I know. This is my first time, but I can already tell this will not be my last time. On the count of three, I want you to scream your name as loud as you can. One, two, three. Yeah. It's nice to meet you. My name's Germain. Now we're family. We're family. I'm married to, in my opinion, the best and the only wife I could ever have. Miss Lisa Marie Ireland Brunson. I definitely outpunted the coverage on that one. She is the apple of my eye. Ooh, I wasn't supposed to get emotional right there. She's blessed me with two beautiful daughters, Reagan Elizabeth and Raylan Aubriette. We're going to bring them next time. Get ready. Brace yourself. I'm telling you these things because I want you to know me and get to know me a little bit. I'm from Durham, North Carolina. John P. Key would say outside the county line. Um, I'm a country boy. I am a UNC Tar Heel basketball fan. Go Heels. And college football, I am a Oklahoma Sooner. Go Sooners. I love a lot of things. As you can tell, I love to eat. I'm still cute. That's what my wife tells me anyway, amen? I, we were talking last night. I love Netflix shows. I love to binge when I can. I'm not going to tell you my guilty pleasures because I don't want you to think I'm a sinner. I just love mafia movies. But that would probably be the greatest thing about me that I enjoy the most, and that is movies. I love them all. Anybody love movies in here? Talk to me. We're family. Talk. You love movies? Yeah, yeah I love action movies. I love dramas. I even love chick flicks. <laughs> Two of the greatest chick flicks ever. First would be You Got Mail. Oh. He was such a player. But the greatest chick flick of all time, hands down, I don't care what you say, would be The Notebook. How many of you love The Notebook? Online family, do you love The Notebook? Type it in there, put some emojis up. It was awesome. And as you can tell, because I got you laughing, I love comedy. Uh, probably one of the greatest comedies ever would be Talladega Night. Dear Baby Jesus, wrapped in swaddling clothes. And you remember when he had his first race and he was driving around the track and he had that car accident and he gets out the car and he's like, oh my God, I'm on fire. I'm on fire. Can I prophesy to y'all? We're about to catch on fire today. If you're ready for the fire of God, I dare you to shout for just seven seconds. Woo! Woo! I'm on fire. He's running. I'm on fire. I'm on fire. And then his buddy over. What was his name? This buddy's name. Cal. Don't act like y'all don't watch this movie. Okay, we're going to call him John Doe. Okay, and just since we don't know. And he's like, he starts running. He's like... Oh, dear God, please don't let the invisible fire kill my friend. I love movies. But not only do I love movies, here's one of the things I do to get away. I like to go to the movies. 
So glad Corona has lifted a little bit so we can get back into the movie theater. And it's a big event for me, okay? I buy my tickets like three days early, okay? I have it on my phone, and if the movie starts at 7 o'clock, I'm there at 5.30. <laughs> Here's the reason why. I got to get my snacks. You understand? I go to a movie theater there. It's called Tinseltown, and they have the best chili cheese fries you can buy in your life. And then after I get it, you know, I, I have them put, I don't do the cheese, though. It's just too much cheese. But I have them put chili on it. And then I have them throw a little jalapeno peppers on it. And then I take black pepper and I cover it till it's completely black. And then I open up like two packs of ketchup and put it in the corner so that when I use my fork and I got to drive it, you know, slide it up to get to my mouth and to get a little bit of that ketchup. And uh, that's why I look like this. Then I go get a little small bag of popcorn that I never really eat, just in case I wanted some, you know, get the candy. And then you know you got to get the large drink. And you know what the best soda is on the planet Earth, right? What's the best soda? Pepsi? Mountain Dew? Dr. Pepper? None of y'all said it. It's Diet Coke. You know why you get Diet Coke? Because the chili cheese fries has 7,000 calories. So you got to chase it down with something that don't have calories, even though Diet Coke puts weight on you. And then you go to the theater, and then you know I'm so glad they upgraded the movie theater. You remember we had to sit in those seats? I'm telling my age, we sit and you was uncomfortable and you was all close like this. But now they have recliners. So I set my stuff down. I get in the recliner, and of course I got on my most comfortable sweatshirt. You know, this generation, they don't even wear clothes. They just go to the movie theaters with pajamas on. And I get comfortable, and I got all my stuff, and I'm sitting in the dark because, you know, I like to be in the dark. Hey, man, I'm coming for you. Hold on. And then you sit back, and you put your feet up, and you got your thing, and you got your phone all charged up in case you want to text somebody. And then you just sit there, and then the previews start rolling because you can't really say you're going to the movies if you don't watch the previews. Because I have to know what's coming up next, Pastor Gene. I just have to know. And then, boom, then the movie's starting. I'm all comfortable and I'm relaxed. Looking like this. Just like many of you look when you come to church. You're comfortable. Ooh, thank you, Holy Ghost. You sit back and all you're doing is Watching. I, I, I want to talk to you just briefly about you being a watcher. Because how I was just sitting, my question to you, I have a lot of questions today. Is that what God sees when he looks down at his church today? A sitting in a chair to relax, not doing anything, watching when we should be active. But more importantly, not just God, it's the world looking at the church, sitting when we should be standing. That, that's the question today. I believe, whoo, I feel the Holy Ghost in here already, amen. That's the question today. Here's what God is asking you, sir. Here's what God is asking you, ma'am. Here's what God is watching all of our online family. You ready? Are you, one, a watcher, or two, are you a worker? <laughs> that's the question. Are you a watcher, or are you a worker? <laughs> Let's be churchy for a minute. Are you a spectator or are you a participator? You see, because people that are watchers, mm -hmm, they are movie goers. They go to the movies. Do you just come to church? Here's the thing that I don't like. You know, I, I really don't like Rotten Tomatoes. You know the app for the movies? They give opinions, 
about a movie based upon their perspective. Uh, so then that makes them what? A movie critic. Here's the question God is asking us today. Are you a church critic? Sitting there criticizing everything when you see the problem but do nothing about it. Watchers are people who gives life permission to come at them opposed to going after life, declaring life. You belong to me because I belong to God. Watchers are people who do nothing while they wait. You missed that. Watchers do nothing while they wait. Can I explain something to you about waiting? Waiting is an action word. They do nothing while they're waiting. And one of the major issues people deal with is that they sit and watch, refusing to get involved in their own movie called life. See, watchers have an ungodly desire called complacency. Woo write that down. Watchers have an ungodly desire called complacency. Mm -hmm. Watchers enjoy living a comfortable lifestyle. Watchers enjoy living a comfortable lifestyle, a lifestyle that we were never created for. Let me say it like you, so you can get it. You were never created to live a comfortable lifestyle. And may I submit to you that watchers are people who have become comfortable with attending church. Watchers in gold is to be comfortable. They have fallen in love with being comfortable. And because of this, the church has a difficult time rejecting comfortability. See, watchers are people who are bound by familiarity. And, 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 and familiarity brings comfort. And if you are not careful, comfort will give birth to compromise. See, the church has become, from, oh my God, if you're going to write something down, here's one of them. The church has become familiar with the presence of God, but not desperate for the person of God. Oh, can I say that again? The church has become familiar with the presence of God, but not desperate for the person of God. And here's the heart of the father to his children. Don't compromise your purpose because you have become comfortable. Uh, don't forfeit your future because you are unwilling to be uncomfortable. Uh, can I explain? Can, can I help some people here? Because you know we're going through friction. Woo! We're going through frustration. You know things are getting on our nerves. Who's going to be honest and not put on your fake faith mask? Can, can I explain to you something? Guess what? That's not the devil. It's not the enemy. Talk to me, Germain. Thank you. It, it, it's, it's not your enemies. You know who it is? It's God. Poking you and priding you, saying to you, uh, wake up. Okay. Oh, okay, see, listen, watch this. Watch this. God will make you uncomfortable so that you will become uncomfortable with comfortability. God will make you comfortable so that you will become uncomfortable with comfortability and believe it or not church there's more in the kingdom of God than being comfortable oh here it is don't settle for comfortability don't settle for comfortable environments that's what I love about this church this church made me worship this morning not that I was sitting there watching as a movie goer trying to get you to move me They don't need to be anointed for you to praise God. They don't need to sing the right note to make you lift your hands. 
Uh oh, I'm getting in trouble now. It's okay. We already here. They don't need to sing your favorite song to make you say, God, you are good. God, you are great. I don't even need to feel anything to do that. All I need to do is think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. My soul begins to scream. I need all the praisers. Stand on your feet and give God a praise. Whether you feel it or not, give him glory. I said, open up your mouth and give the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords glory. Oh, I'm meddling. Let me go here. See, some of you are waiting for you to feel something. And I submit to you today, if you keep on praising, eventually you'll walk up on God. You don't feel anything because you refuse to go deeper. Don't settle for comfortable environments. Don't sit in a chair that makes you too comfortable. You know why? It might put you to sleep. And sleeping people always miss because they enjoy slumber. See, let me commit this to you real quick. Settling, go ahead and take your seat. I'm going to tell you that two more times. Settling is the seed that gives birth to unnecessary suffering. Settling is the seed, whoo, Jesus, that gives birth to unnecessary suffering. Here's what I need for you to repeat after me. And if you feel it, I want you to do what you know you're supposed to do. I'll repeat this after me. I, I will, will not, not settle. settle. Woo! I will not settle i will not settle Woo i will not settle i've been here but i will not settle i know i should but i will not settle if you believe that scream one more time I will not settle for pain. I will not settle for sinuses. I will not settle for poverty. I will not settle for this house, that car. I will not settle for this position. In my, I will. You know what? I'm going to make you get. Everybody stand up. Pull out your cell phone. Pull out your cell phone. Okay. Stand up. Pull out your cell phone. If you have Instagram, go to Instagram. If you don't have Instagram, that's okay. Go to Facebook. Don't have Instagram, go to Facebook. Okay, if you don't have both, Father, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> go to Instagram. Okay, hit the little search button. Hit the little search button. And at the top, I want you to type my name out. G-E-R-M-A-I-N-E. G-E-R-M-A-I-N-E. Y'all see my face? Okay, go ahead and click my page. Do it. Now I want you to hit follow. Okay? Hit follow. For all you Facebook users, pray for me. I got too many people that's on Facebook, so they're trying to make me change my page. I'm going to have to move to, like, a fan page. Y'all pray for me because I just don't want to lose the people I already have. So y'all pray for me, but still click it because I'm going to figure it out. Okay? You hit follow. Everybody following me? I'm going to follow you back. Don't worry about it. We're family. Okay? Now, I want you to go to... The, um, your story icon. Hurry up, we gotta move. Go to the story icon, because we about to post something. We about to post something. Okay? When you get there, hit the create thing, so that you can type out something. Okay? You there? Y'all help whoever is in there, get them there. And here's what I want you to type out. I want you to type out I, the letter I, capital I, and right beside it, I want you to put dot, dot, dot. Okay, so I, dot, dot, dot. Then I want you to hit space, and I want you to type the word will. W-I-L-L. -L. And then I want you to do dot, dot, dot. You see where I'm going? I will, dot, 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 not, N-O-T, for those that need help. I ask my wife all the time. Not embarrassed. Not, dot, dot, dot. I will not 
What you think is next? Settle. S-E-T-T-L-E. Exclamation point. Put it there. All right? Then I want you to hit enter twice. And then I want you to tag me. So it'll be at Germain Brunson. Right? At Germain.Brunson. I will not settle. Okay? And when you got that, go ahead and hit send and tell the whole world. You didn't realize. Every friend you have, smile at me. Every family member you have, every enemy that's watching you that you think ain't watching you, you just told them, I will not settle. I will so good to me. I will not settle. I've done this. I've been there. I don't care what you said, doctor. I will not settle for a good report. I will not settle. You got it? All right, take your seat. Why, why would you do that? Because by the time you get home, somebody's going to send you a text message. So you're going to get a phone call, and it's going to be what your past is before you in this service and then when you're sitting there at home doing nothing you know what you do you pull out your your cell phone involuntarily and go to your social media and the first thing you're gonna see you're gonna see yourself telling yourself I will not settle touch your neighbor and say neighbor we're never going back there again we're never going back there so watch this here's something I want you to remember you ready watchers pay to see the movie. But workers get paid to be a part of the movie. <laughs> see, those who watch attenders, church, not saying none of you in here, maybe they all online, watching. Those who watch receive nothing. But those who participate in the movie gets compensated. Y'all don't mind if I preach to myself. Since y'all ain't shout there. Uh, I'm about to get compensated. Look at that. See, and that's God's question to you today. Are you a watcher or are you a worker? Do you want to pay or do you want to get paid? Do you want to pass out rewards or do you desire to receive the reward of heaven? Amen. See, watchers pay for an experience. Workers get paid for creating the experience. <laughs> oh, that makes me excited. Why? Because that's what God's doing. Here it is again. He's shaking us. He's telling us, wake up. It's time to get to work, destiny point. God doesn't want you woke. He wants you alive. <laughs> Stick with me, young people. I know you're mad at me, but, 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 but being woke is for the world. Being alive is for the kingdom of God. Let me prove it to you through the word. So I don't care if you stone me. Here's what the word says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14. Therefore, he says, who says? God says, awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Oh, here's what I believe, Pastor. Pastor Palmer, here's what I believe. That we are now entering into the fourth and final great awakening. What is that, Pastor G? It is something that has never been experienced before. It is the hour when God pours out his spirit on all flesh. It's when your sons and your daughters will prophesy. It's when old men will dream dreams and young men will see visions. It's when God will pour out his spirit on men's servants, ladies scream, and maid servants. I come to tell you that God's about to put something on this church that the whole city and region will have to recognize because we are entering into the great awakening see watch this watchers wait while workers worship see workers are willing you can take your seats workers are willing to be uncomfortable as long as they get rewarded by God Ooh, can I say this to somebody thank you Lord God has a way of making you uncomfortable 
for the sole purpose of moving you into the promises of God. Whole church, throw your hands up. God told me this. I wrote it down. In this season, God is about to make you comfortable in uncomfortable conditions. God told me to tell you, oh, thank you, Lord. God is, oh, get those hands up. Get them real high. God is going to use you to make uncomfortable situations comfortable. Some of you are about to walk into storms and arguments and board meetings. And the moment you walk in, you're going to sense trouble and you're going to say, peace, be still. Some of you are going to walk into the room of your children that's been bound by fear and nightmares. Whoa, Jesus. And you're about to look at your son and say, peace, be still. Some of you are tired of your wife and your husband fussing at you for no reason, talking down to you. And God's putting an anointing on you today that you're going to look at your spouse and say peace be I dare somebody to give God oh my God lift your hands and say peace be still peace be still peace be still some of you have made the decision I'm no longer going to be a watcher I'm going to be a worker but let's understand that there's people in this room that says I don't care what that preacher says I'm comfortable Life is good. I don't need to change. I went to school, got the job, got the wife, got the car, got the kid. I, I'm good. I'm not doing anything different. And I want to submit to you today, uh, according to God's word, he doesn't want you to be a watcher or a worker. He wants you to be both. A person that watches and works. Let's go to the word of God. Ezekiel chapter 3. This is what's about to happen in this church. Father, I thank you right now that every person that's been sitting on their gift and they've been frustrated, you've been frustrating them because they haven't used their gifts. I thank you that this is the week that they're going to call the church and say, it's time for me to do something. God, I thank you that people that have walked away from serving because of church hurt years ago and said, I'll never do it again. I thank you that this is the hour that you are about to erase church hurt with your blood. And they're about to say, Pastor, here I am. I thank you, God. Woo! I thank you, God, that there's singers out here that refuses to sing but God you're going to frustrate them so much that they're going to have to say I need to be a part of it I need to be an usher I need to work what wake us up wake us up Man, Ezekiel 3.17 talks about it. Isaiah 62.6 talks about it. But I want to go to Luke 21. Luke 21 verse 36. Now you can fuss at Ezekiel. You can fuss at Isaiah. But Jesus said this in Luke 21. Watch, therefore, and pray always. That's our assignment. We are to watch woo, and we are to pray. Somebody say, I'm a watcher, and I'm a worker. I am a watcher, I am a worker that worships. All right, so this brings us to our text. You okay? This brings us, you know what, let's just see if you're okay. I need all the workers and watchers, throw your hands up and give God praise and commit that to him. Yeah. Commit that to him. Commit that to him. It brings us to a text. Amen. Which is found in the seventh chapter of the gospel according to Matthew, the tax collector. How many are so thankful for tax collectors? Put your hands down. I love how detailed... Matthew was testifying about the life of Christ, online family. He started chapter one by giving us the genealogy of Christ, also known as the begats. Don't you enjoy reading the begats? Don't you lie. Chapter it's about the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In chapter two of Matthew, the angel of the Lord visits Joseph. 
and tells him to escape to Egypt until the death of King Herod because he was going to give an order to kill all male children in Bethlehem and the surrounding regions. You do understand that that same voice is happening today in the earth, that a decree has been made that for all males to be killed, That's powerful. You want to know why? Because males represent the face of God. Women represent the face and the character of God. I just messed some of y'all up. Because y'all, what you trying to say? Women are more important than men. You wouldn't be here if you didn't have a good woman in your life. You know, like your mom, your grandma, your auntie. Come on, the teacher. I'm helping some of y'all men with y'all's marriage right now. That ain't, it's funny, but it's the truth. Hold on. We're going to get all the way there. In chapter 3, the Bible introduces us to John the Baptist, who preached a simple message. (laughs) Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Lord, raise up John the Baptist in this church that will have a simple message. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This is also the chapter when Jesus meets his cousin, John the Baptist, and says, I need to be baptized. John the Baptist says, no, you need to baptize me. And Jesus said, no, for the word to be fulfilled, you have to baptize me. So the Bible says that he went to the the river, and when Jesus went down in that water and came up, the Bible said what, y'all? That the heavens were That the heavens were, and the spirit of who? Can I tell you what's happening today? Hallelujah. Can I tell you what's happening and what's already happening in the service and what's going to continue to happen tonight? Heaven is open. And the Bible says, and the spirit of the Lord descended upon him in the form of 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 a dove. And after this miraculous event, Jesus was led into the wilderness by the spirit to be tempted by the devil. Hold on. Jesus was led into the wilderness to be tempted by the Jesus was led into the wilderness by the spirit of God to be t- If Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness what makes you think the spirit ain't going to lead you into your dark place You know like the friction and the frustration is the spirit leading But <laughs> See, some of y'all been giving too much credit to the devil. Can I tell you something? Watch this. If this beautiful couple says the devil is fighting us, and then to to you, ma'am, you say the devil's fighting you, and then you, sir, say the devil's fighting you, guess what? Somebody's lying. Can I tell you why? The devil can't be in three places at the same time. So I submit to, oh, my God, y'all should have started praising God. It ain't, you should say, thank you, God. It's you that's about to do something in me. It's you that's ripping things out of me because you are about to pour into me from an open door. Let me say something to you. God doesn't tempt you, but he will test you. Online, they didn't shout. They didn't like it. God will not tempt you, but he will test you. I love that teacher. You know why? Y'all ain't going to get with me. So I'm going to talk to them. Because he then gives us a book. He gives us an open book test. That has every act. Here's, here's why you don't have your answers. You're not in your word enough. I hope you ain't clapping for your neighbor. I hope you're clapping for yourself. He'll give you an open book. Because he just tests you. Oh, man, here's what the Bible says about that. First Corinthians 10, verse 13. No temptation has overcome you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. I said, God is faithful. I said, God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. I'm going to say it again. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Hebrews. 
Hebrews 4 14 says therefore since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven Jesus the son of God let us hold firmly to the faith we profess for we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize empathize with our weakness but we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are yet he did not sin let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive the mercy and find grace to help us in the time of need if you need help lift your hands right now God's putting on you grace God's putting on you mercy you can endure the test You can endure the test. Oh. A lot of things happen in chapter 5. It's the greatest sermon ever. The Sermon on the Mount. Uh, it deals with the Beatitudes. Oh God, let me see if anybody in here with me. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst for righteousness. For germane shall be. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Blessed are they, that means you, that hunger and thirst for righteousness, you shall be filled. If you're hungry and thirsty for God, lift your hands, he's about to fill you. Chapter 5, it starts teaching us the law. It starts talking about anger, anger, excuse me, adultery, divorce. It starts talking about revenge. Yeah, God's going to help some of y'all forgive people today. That's why you've been locked in the, the um, chains and you've been in jail. It's because of your unforgiveness. God's about to set you free today. Somebody shout, open the door. Yeah. Woo. He starts, woo. Yeah. He starts talking about money. Mm -hmm. I am a prosperity preacher. You know why? Because that's God's wish for my life. You want me to prove it to you? Beloved, I wish above all things. Here's the first thing he names that you prosper. Be in health even as your. Yeah, he starts talking about money. He starts talking about anxiety. He starts talking about judging others. Mm -hmm. He starts talking about the narrow great trees that should bear fruit. And watch this. He starts talking about prayer. Say that with me, prayer. Jesus really tackles this matter of prayer in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, when he says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. But before we jump into this verse, there's one thing that I don't want you to forget. And it's this. Write this down. God will never give you an instruction that will hinder you or harm you. God will never give you an instruction online that will hinder you or harm you. It may hurt your feelings, but it won't harm you. This is important because God's instructions always pushes you into what's next. Uh-oh, here it is. God doesn't operate by making suggestions. God's method of operation is declaring what's not as though it is and here's the first instruction you ready the first instruction from God is ask shout I said shout type it in the comments ask that is the Greek word ateo which means to desire it means to beg it means to call for it means to request it means to petition watch this it means to invite but I love this it also means to demand See, asking is a form of prayer. Mm. Prayer is how you communicate with God. When you communicate with someone, you give or interchange thoughts, feelings, or information by talking, writing, singing, or listening. You communicate with God by having intimate conversations with God. Let me show you how that looks. That's you talking to God while God is listening to what you say. And more importantly, it is God talking to you while you stand there and listen. Yeah. See, communication isn't one person doing all the talking husbands. 
and all the other person do is listen, wives. No, that's not communication. That's dictatorship. And I read in history that all dictators die an early death. See, and this is why we don't see the things we're asking God for. You want to know why? Because we talk too much. Uh, maybe you can't hear God because you are speaking louder than he's talking. Uh, but oh, when you understand prayer, you realize that ask, asking gives you access. And who you ask determines the advantage you acquire. Can I encourage you today? Start having intimate dialogues with God because here it is. You may want to write this down. This is good. Whoever has the king's ear can possess everything the king owns. You didn't hear what I said. Whoever has the king's ear can possess everything the king owns. Oh, I need for you to high five three people and tell them I'm his favorite. I'm his favorite. You should have looked right back at him and said, no, you're not. I am. Can I tell you, I'm God's favorite. And when I ask him, guess what? I'm about to receive it. Uh oh, what? Because when you ask, the Bible says, and it will be given to you. You want to know what that means in the Greek? This is important. When you ask, and it be given to you, Here's what he says. I'm about to give you the advantage. When you ask, he says, I'm about to bestow on you a gift. I don't know who this is for, business owner. But this, when you ask, he said, if you ask, I'm going to grant you permission to permit other things to happen or not. Listen, when you ask, he says, okay, I'm going to respond by doing this. I'm going to supply and furnish every necessary thing. When you ask, watch this, when you, when, 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 when you ask and it will be given to you, here's what he says, I'm going to cause it to come forth. Stand up, stand up, lift your hands, lift your hands. Uh, this is for their benefit, but this is for you. You are about to see the level that you are already on. Everything that you've been praying, God said, has already happened. It's about to come forth. That means everybody in this room is about to come forth. Your, your family is about to come forth. Your finances is about to come forth. Your peace is about to come forth. Your healing is about to come forth. I dare you to give God praise that it's about to come forth. I got to give you one more definition. And you will receive. Pastor Josh, get ready. This is for you. He said, and it will be given to you. It means to hand out lots of. Because God will never do what you ask him to do. Online, they didn't get with me, so let me talk to you. God will never do what you asked him to do. Scripture. Because I would do exceedingly. Y'all don't know y'all word. Y'all better get in the word in the name of Jesus. God said, I'm not going to do what you ask. I'm going to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ever ask or think. I come to tell you, you've been living your best life. That's not godly. God says you're about to live your abundant life. Somebody shall ask. Oh, Jesus. Okay. The second instruction. So the first is we got to ask so that we can receive, right? The second is, you ready? You got to seek. That's the Greek word, zeteo. You see how they kind of sound alike? Zeteo, that means to go in search of or to try to find or discover by searching or questioning. But I like this definition. Seek means to pursue. Pursue means to follow in order to overtake. It means to strive to gain. It means to attain or accomplish. Watch this. It means to continue on a course 
or journey. Here's where it gets a little different. It means to annoy, to afflict or trouble. When you're seeking, you are annoying something. Mm. It means to chase after someone or something. Okay, you guys ready? There is a difference between looking and searching. There's a big difference. Watch this. Looking requires no effort. Searching requires a decision. Pursuing demands an action. I'm going to say that again. Looking requires no effort. Searching requires a decision, but pursuing demands an action. Did you know it is possible to look at something and not see it? Most people will never find what they're looking for because they overlook it. Failing to notice what's right in front of them. There's a medical term. Um, I know we're in a medical city, so some of y'all are going to like this preacher. Amen. I'm glad. Amen. Hallelujah. There's a medical term called scotoma. This is mental blind spots that prevent you from seeing what's right in front of you. My fear is that humanity has been struck with spiritual scotoma. Failing to notice as you disregard and even ignore God when he's right in front of you. Here's why. You want to know why that happens? We want things more than we want God. Don't, oh God, write this down. Don't desire things more than you desire the Father. Church, we have to stop looking for things and start looking for the King. Here's why. Because when you get the creator of all things, you get the things he created. Can I meddle a little bit? You okay if I meddle? Y'all know that means that's a Kentucky thing. I learned it when I moved there three years ago. Let me annoy you. There's some things you don't need to see. Uh, you can never unsee what you saw. Write this down. Seeing wrong things create wrong desires. Wrong desires produce ungodly cravings. Ungodly cravings are only satisfied by sinful activity. Uh, We're going to get it again. I like that it's quiet. This is God dealing with us. He's dealing with us. He's telling us to watch and work. Seeing the wrong things create wrong desires. Wrong desires produce ungodly cravings. Ungodly cravings are only satisfied by sinful activity. And the only way you fix this, you have to stop looking for things and start searching for God. See, looking creates a motive to search. Looking creates a motive to search. Searching sets in motion the desire to seek. You have to search it out for yourself. You have to go looking for it. You have to explore. You have to read and examine. You have to do some research, but don't be a professional researcher because that then could move you into another spiritual disease called spiritual analysis paralysis. You want to know what that is? That is a disease that paralyzes. It is a disease that paralyzes a person by gathering by the gathering of too much data and analytics of that data. Let me explain what that is. That's the issue with the church. You want to know what it is? It's this. People know a lot about God, but don't have a personal relationship with God. Oh, but he made us a promise. He made us a promise, fam, that if we seek, we shall find. I'm just looking for anybody that's tired of seeking and you're ready to find. Here's what that means when you find you are about to come upon it. That means you're going to be walking through your day and what you've been praying for going to show up right in front of you. It means that you're about to hit upon it. It means that the thing that you were searching for is about to search you out. That means that some of you haven't been looking for anything, but by chance you're about to walk up on something you didn't even know was possible. 
you are about to find what you've been looking for. Let's put some Bible on it real quick. You ready? Matthew 6, 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his. And all these, watch your tongue, Gourmet. And all these things. Y'all missed it. You know how all these things show up? God, I'm looking for you. I'm looking for you, God. I'm annoying you. You know what? I made this determination a few weeks ago, family. I changed my name. I'm serious. I'm not trying to be funny here. I'm Jacob. I am the guy. I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. And some of y'all need to change your name today and say, God, I'm not going to stop seeking you until you find me. Okay. Sorry. Revival Sunday. Next time I'll come and be 32 minutes. I promise. I am. So the first instruction is what? Say it out loud. Online, type it in. It's asked. The second instruction is? And then there's one more. Knock. That means to strike a solid blow with your fist, your knuckles, or something hard, especially on a door. It means to make a pounding noise. It means to strike against something. But guess what? The last meeting, meaning of knock is in the Greek. It means to rap. R A P Rap Rap means to strike quickly and smart. Rap means to utter vigorously. Rap means to communicate. Rap means to talk with rhythm. Rap, thank you Webster, means to criticize. It means to arrest, to detain, to sentence for a crime. It means to blame or punish for a crime. God wants you to rap to him while giving the adversary a bad rap. Pastor G, uh, I don't even like rap. Uh, I, I don't understand it. I don't understand that language. Nor do I get it. Some would say though. But if I know a rap song. I only know one rap song. And it goes a little something like this. Now this is a story. <laughs> all about how my life got flipped. Turned upside down, and I like to take a minute, just sit right here and tell you how I became the prince of a town called. Man, I feel the power of God. I do. In West Philadelphia, born and raised on the, spent most of my days chilling out, maxing, relaxing, all cool, and I was shooting some b-ball outside of the school when a couple of guys, they were up to no good, started making...
in my I got in one little fight in my she said you I whistle for a crab and when it came near the license plate said fresh and it was a dice in the mirror if anything I could say I said now nah, I forget it yo watch this watch this watch this I pulled up to the house around seven or eight and I yelled to the cabbie yo home smell you later Looked at my kingdom. Ho, 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 hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I know you don't like it. I know you don't get it. You don't understand it. But if I know a rap song, I know that I looked at my kingdom. Y'all, I'm going to preach right here to you. I'm going to say it to you. I looked at my kingdom. You didn't realize that all the trouble you were going through was simply God building. I looked at my kingdom. You didn't realize all the stress that you've been under. It was God using it because you're about to look at your kingdom. And then I love what he prophesied. I'm finally there. I don't know who needed to hear that, but you've been trying to get to a place in God and God shouting at you today. You're already there. You've been trying to have and possess. You've been wanting your family to walk in peace. And God says to you today, I'm finally there. If you're happy to finally be where you want it to be in the kingdom of God, stand on your feet and start screaming right now i looked at my kingdom oh i prophesy i looked at my kingdom i look i dare you give god 10 more seconds i looked at my king stay standing stay standing jesus if y'all gotta go get your roast go get it I looked at, I'm serious, you got to go. You got to go. I'm going to go a little over 12. I only got three minutes anyway, so of course I'm going to go a little over. I'm sorry. But God's doing something. You know why? He's screaming at you today. Open the door. See? Before we jumped into these three points, God doesn't make suggestions to you. He's not suggesting, suggestion, I can't even, he's not suggesting that you should rap. He's demanding that you should rap to him. Some of you don't laugh, but I'm going to prove it to you after you laugh. You okay? You didn't realize God made each and every last one of you the best rapper of all time. How was that possible? Because he gave you the best rap lyrics you could ever have. He started it with 150 rap songs. Let me see that hat. See, some of y'all need to get yourself ready. For your concert. What am I going to rap? Well, this rap song is called Psalms 34, 1 and 3. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord, and let us exalt his name. Now, here's the problem. Some of you said it, but you didn't do it. That's what makes you great. That's what makes a psalm is great. It's not what they say. It's that they live what they say. I, I got plenty of them. And I'm just going to give you one for the sake of time. Can I give you one more? Y'all okay with my hat on? Because I'm rapping to the Lord. Now, if we do this last rap song, I need for everybody to participate when we get to the end of the song. Trust me, you know it. You just got to do. You ready? Psalms 150. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you right now, if y'all was in my rap concert, I'm kicking you out. Crowd participation. 
See, that's what you don't realize. See, because we don't do what God wants us to do, we don't get what he wants us to have. This wasn't for you to read. This was to lead you into praise. Oh, God. Okay, you ready? Let's try it again. Praise the Lord. Praise him in the sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the loop in the heart. Praise him with the timbre and dance. Praise him on string instruments. Praise him on flutes. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with clashing cymbals. Here it is. Let everything that has breath. No, you said it. Let everything that has breath. Some of you still saying it. Do it. Let everything that has praise ye the Lord. I dare you to do it. Not. Another way you can wrap. To God is by saying what he told you to say. So Psalms lead us into doing. Yes. But sometimes God will tell us what to say so that he can do. Simple. Matthew chapter 6. The Sermon on the Mount. The greatest sermon ever. In this manner, therefore rap. In this manner, therefore rap. You read it in your Bible, pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, thy, thy, on earth as it is, give us, and for, as we forgive, and lead us, but for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Scream it, amen. <laughs> Woo, somebody shout open. I decree and declare that there's something opening over your life today. A businessman, I decree and declare that something is opening over your business. Mother and father, I prophesy to you that something is opening over your kids. Pastors and the staff and the leaders of this church, God has opened up heaven over this church. AJ, run up here real quick, buddy. Watch this. The word open has 88 different definitions. 88 different definitions. Can I encourage you that if you are willing to... God is about to respond to you at a minimum of 88 different ways. If you... Oh, we don't get that. Just, if you... The minimum response to this church will be 88 different ways. Somebody shout 8-8. Eight, 8 eight represents a new beginning. Throw your hands up. God is resetting everything about your life today. God is resetting everything about your family today. God is resetting everything about your employment and your business today. God is resetting every, keep the lights up for me. God is resetting everything about your community today. God is resetting everything about this church today and this city. If you would not. Pastor Jen, God told me to tell you. He's resetting everything about this ministry. He's about to start it all over again, but he's about to build upon the foundation that's already been laid. You're not starting where you started 10 years ago, God said. Turn around and look. This is the foundation. This ain't even the start of it. 
Somebody shout 88. The number 88 has, has how many eights? Lift your hands. God said, get ready. You're about to walk in double. Everything about your life is about to double. Woo! Everything you put your hands to is about to prosper. And the prosperity will be double fold. Everything about your ministry is about to double. I can't give you all 88 definitions, but I, I got to give you just a couple. That eight open means not to be covered up. God is about to expose many of you. The gifts that you've been hiding, God's about to take the cover off. Get those hands up. He's about to open you up if you... God to open, it means having the interior immediately accessible to your life. My God. Here's what the Lord is saying, church. Everything in heaven is about to be accessible to you. Everything in heaven, guess what? You know what that means? There's things in heaven we don't even know about. God's about to make it accessible to you. I hear the Lord saying heaven is about to work for you now, if you would. Let me give you this. It means to unlock the doors for public use. Church, destiny, Columbia is about to come running through the door. Aren't y'all the young adults pastors? Young adults pastors? And woo, my dad, my dad, could y'all look to me? Spirit of prophecy is here. I already told you, if you got to get to your roast, we love you. We'll see you tonight at six. Where's your husband? Is he at home? Huh? Hey, up there, husband, run. But a God is going to bless me with those shoes today. Lift your hands. This is why I come out and worship, because in atmospheres when God speaks to me specifically, right? And it's always in worship in the house. It ain't necessarily when I'm by myself. It's always in worship. That's why I push to come out. And doing worship, doing the second song, God said, I don't know if you're doing it yet. Oh, God, let me find out. Jesus Christ, we love you today. Would you, would you start? Okay, this is how you're not. Open your mouth and start asking God for things. Come on, come on. Give God the fruit of your lips. If you're not, if you don't have volume to your voice, I hate to tell you, you're not asking, seeking, or knocking. Out loud, open your mouth. Out loud, open your mouth. Look at him. Look at him. Don't look at me. Close your eyes. Ask him. worship I don't know if you guys are doing this yet but I heard the Lord say I'm about to open up a door for you at the campus of Missouri I don't know if it's happening I don't know if you're planning it or not but God says I'm opening up a door man you got to get ready to there's a door opening at that campus that is going to blow your mind at that campus. That's going to bring them into this building. God said, God, I heard the Lord telling me right now, he's about to use you as a wind. He said that your presence there would be destructive by nature, but it will be attractive by character. That God's going to use you as a wind to destroy the spirit of religion. And he's going to attract those that's been looking for more of his presence. Sinners that's been looking for God. They didn't even know it. God said, I'm going to use you as a wind. He's opening a door at that campus. Get ready. Y'all about to start a campus ministry. I dare you to shout right now that the door is opening. An opportunity. When God opens the door, he gives you an opportunity. Because verse 8 in that, in that chapter, for everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, you're going to find. Them. And the one that, 
there will be hope. There's all types of doors. There's all types of doors. Y'all forgive me for wearing this gray shirt. I didn't realize until worship how bad I was going to sweat. And I apologize. I will have a black one on tonight, so you won't have to call me gross. Oh, lift your hands right now. Start knocking. He wants to open the door. There are all types of doors. You got interior doors. You have exterior doors. You have patio doors. One of my favorite, and I know down here you have them. You have barn doors. But there is a common door. And all of these doors, watch this, all of these doors, for those doors to open, man, you have to apply some pressure. Come here, sweetheart. Maroon dress. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Lift your hands, beautiful. I just got a simple message for you. God says, I'm going to prove myself to you where you will doubt me no more because I'm about to work it out for you in the next two weeks. Woo! Y'all sense that? You will never question him again another day in your life. For those doors to open, it takes pressure, some form of pressure for it to open up. And you know what God's saying you need to do to get those types of doors open? Apply pressure. Well, how do I apply pressure? I ask. I seek. I knock. And then it will open. But there's one common door that we all love. The door that we don't have to open ourselves. That's called an automatic door. That's the door that when you're walking and the sensor senses your presence. When you walk up on the door, the door goes. And as long as you stay in the proximity of the sensor, the door will never close. You want to know what triggers the sensor? It's your praise. You want to know what triggers the sensor? It's your worship. It looks something like this. God, I thank you. I don't feel good today, but I know you're a healer. God, I don't know how you're going to work this situation out, but I know you're going to work it out because you already worked it out. God, I really don't like him today. I really don't like her today, but I'm a walk in forgiveness. And when you start giving God that type of praise, it triggers the sensor and the door. I dare you to take the next 20 seconds and trigger the sensor. Open your mouth and trigger the sensor. I said, open your mouth. I seek and knock and let's trigger the... Something's about to open up for you, sir. Something's about to open up for you, ma'am. Trigger the sensor. Trigger the sensor. Trigger the sensor. Trigger the sensor. Open your mouth. Get your mouth. Trigger the sensor. Trigger the sensor. Trigger the sensor, honey. I'm telling you, God's about to work it out. Trigger the sensor. Trigger the sensor. I'm, what, what are you doing? We got to go home. You go home to a closed door. But I believe I'm in the room and some people watching online. I'm not going to stop praising you until you open the door. I'm not going to stop worshiping until you trigger the sensor. Some of y'all need to put your title down and become a child of God. The father will always answer the child that cries the loudest. Y'all missed it. Whoever cries the loudest, that's who the father's going to answer. I'm looking for all the crybabies to open up your mouth and cry so that daddy can answer your prayer.
That's it, honey. Let people look at you. That's all right. They going to judge you when you tell them that door opened up for you. I'm telling you, sir, you've been waiting on a promotion. I'm telling you, open your mouth and this week you may see it. Open your mouth so that God can open the door. Open your mouth so that God can open the door. Open your mouth so that God can open the door. you it's open it's open it's open i'm i'm telling y'all listen the devil ain't gonna stop this prayer take the next few moments and open your mouth and get the prayer through whatever you've been asking for open your mouth that's it that's it whoever said i need your help that's gonna open the door dead things are living again, the door is open. Now watch this, watch this. Keep praying, keep praying, but listen. Sometimes, some places, some doors, like barn doors, patio doors, exterior doors, Pastor Jen, they don't have a doorbell. So you gotta old school it. You gotta knock. But sometimes your knock doesn't capture the attention of what is happening on the other side of the door because there's so much going on on the other side of the door, they can't hear you. So what do you do? You gotta knock harder. Here's what God is saying to some of you. Why don't you take the moment and knock harder? I'm trying to see how desperate you are. Let me in. I will. I grew up in the projects. I was a project boy. They call them government housing assistants. No, they're called the projects. They had these big four wood wood doors. And sometimes, bro, I would go and I would get home late because I was selling drugs. I was beating up people. I was shooting at people. I've been shot at. I'm still here. All of that stuff. And I would get home late. What God would use a dude that sold drugs, that shot at people that should be in jail, that was a whoremonger. Yeah, he'll use me just like he's about to use you. The door is open. And sometimes when I would get home, I would not, and I didn't want to wake up the whole house. So, but after 10 minutes, my knuckles started hurting. You know what I started doing? Y'all better hear me prophetically. Let me. I want to get in. I want to get in. Some of y'all in here, most of you don't want to get in. Some of you want to get out. You want to get out of what's been binding you. You want to get out of having to have a glass of wine or a bottle of wine to go to sleep. You want to get out of smoking cigarettes. You're tired of smelling like smoke. You want to get out of smoking weed. You want to get out of shacking up. Lord, forgive me, but it's just it's real. You, you want to get out of watching things on television when your wife goes to sleep. You want to get out of watching things on television when your husband goes to sleep. You want to get out of the past. And sometimes you can't just be like, God, I want to be free. He he don't believe that. Because you said it over and over and over again. But here's what he will believe. God! Let me out of here! God! 
God, I want to be saved. I want to be delivered. I want to be set free. I don't want to be bound by drugs. I don't want to be bound by alcohol. I don't want to divorce my wife. I don't want to divorce my husband. That's how some of y'all see it, but sometimes you gotta pray. We won't be satisfied, God, at all. Open the door. We won't be satisfied. I'm not gonna be satisfied with this lifestyle any longer. I wanna be free. Yeah, I got snot screaming down my face. So what? Let me in. you to do today. You missed it. You thought he wanted you to say open the door. No. God is saying to you, sir, ma'am, teenager, how about you open the door and let me in. Here's the altar call. Some of y'all are bound by things that you can't get off of your back. Some of you are doing things that you have literally been trying to get set free from, from and you can't. You're tired of the old you. You're tired of taking medicine that they say you have to take all your life. You're tired. Here's what I hear the Lord say. You are bold enough today to put your position down, your title down, and come to this altar and knock on the door. By the time you get here, you'll realize the door's been open the whole time.